we're going to kick off with a bit of stand up from the wonderful Michael Hudson. <laughs> There was Vogue playing because I'm under Donna Stan, but it takes so long to get in, it'll kick in in like a minute. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> um, so I went to a wedding last weekend and um, I had a really jarring experience actually because the absolute banger that is reached by S Club 7 came on. And uh, that's not the jarring experience, it's a wedding, of course that song is going to be played. And a surprise to no one, I literally did not leave the dance floor at any point in that night. It's my job as a friend to keep the dance floor going. But anyway, the jarring thing was that when Reach was on, everyone who like I went to uni with, we were all living our best life. We were all like drama kids at uni, so we were living our best life. What was funny was that two of the groom's cousins who were, I'm going to say maybe about 17, had no idea what the song was. Like, <laughs> none. You could see this look on their face. <laughs> like, as it, all these 30 year olds around them are like screaming in joy, and these two 17 year olds are like, reach, reach, reach. And it was just baffling to us because, yes, you may not be, in, you may not have been alive then, but how have you never heard that song? You've never been to a wedding, you've never been to a single party with a bad DJ. No, that song is a staple, and I was just personally offended that they didn't um, really know what it was. Um, there was also one other night in the um, in the wedding. Uh, Saturday night came on by Wigfield. <laughs> Literally, amazing song. And my grievance with this is not that some people don't know it. It's that people do the dance wrong. <laughs> people add in an extra box step before the jump and turn. You're then dancing to a ten count, which is stupid. <laughs> and I'm aware that this is very niche, but I'm a dancer first, and it fucks me off when people do it wrong. Because then you're out of time with the song, and it doesn't make sense, and even the bride did it. <laughs> I'm there on the dance floor doing it correctly, and the bride is doing it wrong. You can't punch someone on their wedding. You can't, I mean, you can. But you should. And um, so, um, yeah, I, I take these songs, these bangers, very seriously. Um, and I, I think it speaks to the fact that I am a millennial. And millennials in general take nostalgic things very seriously, hence why we're doing the, an entire event based on a pun that was made in a committee meeting. Literally, we were like, oh, when can we do this event? The 30th of April, that's cool. And it was like, it's going to be May. We were like, yes! <laughs> millennials love grabbing onto anything about the past. And I think what it boils down to, serious pun intended, I think it's because when we were growing up, we were told you can be anything. Literally, the world is yours. Whatever you want to be, that is a dream. Go and get it. And then we grew up, and <laughs> you, don't, you don't get that. I mean, you're growing up, the worst thing that could possibly happen to you is that Mufasa's died, and so they're telling him to wake up. And it's like, oh, That's the worst thing that could possibly happen in the 90s. What we should have been paying attention to is The Little Mermaid, because that's all about contract law. <laughs> and that is a much better film to set us up for our life, I think, looking at the small things. But um, thanks to recessions and war and 12 years of a Tory government, we all learned that, no, you don't get your dream back. Especially if you want a career in the arts. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, and getting that reality check, I think, scares us. Because, again, we go back to, but mum said that I could do everything. <laughs> and now I have to pay taxes. <laughs> and so we're, we're constantly trying to get that feeling back of being in the 90s and just having fun and being very, very carefree. Um, and I think that's very different to the way that Gen Z are. Any Gen Z in the house? You are correct to stay quiet. Nobody likes Gen Z. I can see you there, Charlie, staying quiet. Or Amy, what year were you born? 2000. <laughs> 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 on the other side of millennials, they're Gen Z, they grew up knowing full well that they would not achieve their dreams. Straight away from a child, it's like, nothing will ever go your way, children. No job in the arts. No chance of buying a house. And I think they just accept it. And I think they, they've really embraced the fact that they are going to be living with their parents until they're 40. <laughs> by dressing like a sex offender who lives in their mum's basement. <laughs> because 
most of Gen Z seem to have this obsession with like sick coloured corduroys and centre partings and looking like a sex offender at age 19 and I just don't get it. Um, apparently according to TikTok, skinny jeans aren't cool anymore and side parts are not the one but I'm sorry, you can fight my skinny jeans off my dead fucking corpse. I would be wearing them as an old man. You know how like old people now wear like suits and nice day dresses because that's what they wore in like the 40s and 50s? I have a feeling that when we're elderly, we're going to be wearing like fallout boy t-shirts and like drained like skinny jeans and like seam kid hair. I mean, I'm kind of here for it. Um, yes, n nostalgia though I think is very, very powerful. I mean, name a film that came out in the last five years that wasn't a reboot of something. Oh yeah, you can't because they're all shit reboots. And it's, it's capitalism basically because they're, tr they're counting on the fact that we want this like content that is going to fulfill that need. Um, it's a textbook sign of anxiety if you watch the same thing over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I may have watched Heartstopper start to finish four times in the last seven days. Don't judge me. <laughs> but um, this constant need to rewatch the same thing and that anxiety that millennials have, that's why these people are rebooting every motherfucking Disney film and rebooting every sacred thing. They touch Buffy. <laughs> as the only, yeah, Buffy, they can't touch that. And as long as they don't bring back furbies. Someone tries to bring back a motherfucking furby. That will, I mean, I won't protest because Pretty Patel will kill me. <laughs> but I would like to protest because Furbies are like having a pet hamster. I feel like everyone had a traumatic experience with it. And no one had a good experience of having a hamster or a Furby. Very similar things up here. But um, my Furby was terrifying, as they all were. Three in the morning, pitch black. Oh. Hell, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Even at like oh, seven, eight years old, that's fucking terrifying. So I put it in a different room, turned it off. From another room. Hello. No. I took the batteries out of it. Hello. How? You have no batteries. So literally, me and my sister threw it out of the window into the road and watched it get hit by a car. And I swear, it was still trying to scream hello. So, um, we're all here to celebrate the 90s. I'm very much looking forward to that. However, I think we can all agree that no one touches Buffy. Gen Z all look like sex offenders. <laughs> and Furbies are the worst. Yeah, yeah? cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>